Well, what we're learning is that every form of problem or mental disorder can be understood at a spiritual level. Depression in some ways can be understood not just as a psychological and a physical problem, but a spiritual problem. Addiction can also be understood as a spiritual problem. We've done some research which seems to suggest that when people experience a spiritual struggle, we sometimes call it a spiritual vacuum. They have questions about their ultimate meaning. They have a wrestling challenge with God or with the darker forces. They're struggling with their faith. When they have this spiritual vacuum, it seems to increase the likelihood of the development of an addictive disorder. Why is that? Well, we think because addictions provide a false substitute for spiritual connection. With an addiction, there's an intense feeling, often intense high, which is somewhat like a feeling people can get in the spiritual experience. There's an intensity that can leave the person temporarily satisfied, that may temporarily feel that deep, deep hunger or yearning for something deeper and more fundamental. But of course the addiction is ultimately unsatisfying and ultimately destructive because it only leads to more trouble. But in that sense, we can think about addictions as misdirected spiritual searches in that people who are addicted are also spiritual beings looking to fill a spiritual hunger. It's just they've taken the wrong road. Well, that's a really very important question. Um, you could argue, for instance, that spiritual support and religious support are just examples of social support more generally. And you could say it doesn't matter whether you get your support from God, your support from your church, or your support from your local um, sports club or commitment to a sports team. It's all support. Well, the research seems to suggest that spiritual support adds something special and that the religious and spiritual dimension offers something distinctive. And, and what is that? Well, we think that spirituality offers specific tools and resources that are geared and designed to help people come to terms with the fact that we're finite, limited, frail human beings who we all eventually die. And the spiritual resources that have been developed over thousands of years are particularly designed to help people face the fact that there are limits to what we can do. Well, that's the cutting edge of the field. Up to now, we've been focused on demonstrating that the spiritual dimension is part of being human and that it's linked to physical health and mental health. And we're starting to ask very specific questions about why and how does that relationship take place? What is it about religion or spirituality that may affect health? and well-being. But we're now accumulating enough evidence, and I mean that scientifically, evidence, hard scientific evidence of these relationships to suggest it's time to move beyond peer research to practice, to application of this knowledge base to helping people with problems. That's what we're starting to do now. This is an exciting time to be working in the field. When I first started, I used to be able to go to the library once a semester with a sandwich and an apple 
and leisurely scroll through the journals in the field in one day and get caught up. That is no longer possible. There's so much exciting research going on now that it is impossible for any one person to stay fully informed and we need now to begin to work much more in teams, multidisciplinary teams because we share this interest and no one individual has all of the answers, no one individual can stay fully informed. But that is starting to happen, we're starting to see teams of researchers in different centers all over the world here in Brazil, in Juiz de Fora, in universities in the United States, in places in Europe. And I think this is very encouraging because through these centers, through these um, multidisciplinary um, research groups, we're generating knowledge at a really tremendous rate. So I'm, I'm very excited about the future of our field.